Hi everybody, and uh, here's the first vodcast for conceptual physics. Um, what we're talking about here is the nature of science, um, which means just what is involved in the science of physics. Um, so pay attention, take your notes. Don't be afraid to you, don't be afraid to use that pause button and pause me at any time so that you can help yourself. Okay. All right. So what is science? Well, let's talk about some definitions here. Okay. First of all. Science is a study of unanswered questions about nature. It's studying things that we don't know, and it's about nature. Now, it doesn't mean trees in the woods nature. It just means everything, really. Um, but here's the most important part, and I really wanted to talk about this, is that there's three parts, okay? First off, there's content, okay? Content is the first thing about science. There's a lot of facts to understand. Um, but there's a lot of information to know. Plus, there is a process. I'm going to try to write well here. It's hard for me to do that, seeing as this is the first time. But there's a process, OK? There's a process about science where we go about things, where we try to find things out the most logical way possible in a controlled situation, and we try to knock out any other possible explanations. There's a process to it, kind of the scientific method. Okay? And lastly, there is an attitude. Just made it, okay? There's an attitude about science in that, yes, we know what we know, and we know it really, really well, um, but there is a chance for it to be changed. We understand that. It most likely won't be changed, but it can change. Uh, nothing is totally taken for, uh, for granted um, technically, but pretty much we can take things for granted because they're usually correct. Okay? So what actually is physics then? If you know, Physics is a type of science, right? It's the study of matter and energy. Okay? Matter is the stuff you're made of. We're talking about atoms. We're talking about things smaller than atoms. We're not talking about chemical combinations. That's chemistry. We're talking about atoms and subatomic particles and the like. And then we also have energy, which is energy given to things. It's things in motion. It's things colliding. It's um, the atom bomb, bombs, food, that type of energy. And so we look at how matter and energy actually interact between each other. And just think E equals mc squared. Okay. Big explosions when matter turns into energy. And lastly for this part, we do also need to define math, or at least define it in relation to physics, how we are going to use it. It is a tool for us, okay? We use math to quantify and explain concepts. The idea here is that if you're a cop and you pull somebody over, you can go up to their driver's side window and say, yep, you're going pretty fast, but you can't give them a ticket for that because what is pretty fast? I don't know. But what you can tell them is, well, I saw you going, I had a radar gun and it measured you, going 85 miles an hour in a 40 mile an hour zone. I will take your license. You can do that because you have quantified it. You have a representation that's not just an adjective. It's a definitive number. That's where math comes in for us. It also allows us to calculate uh, different, um, well, equations uh, to allow us to understand relationships between concepts as well. All right. So. Let's talk about this process. Let's talk about the scientific method. Okay? What is it? Well, the most simplest explanation is that it's an effective way of answering scientific questions. Okay? Scientific questions. It's got to be a scientific question. Okay? All right. Now, people usually say there are steps to the scientific method. I, I don't want to subscribe to that because they don't always go in the same order. Okay? You or a scientist might identify the problem first and then research and make a hypothesis. And then they might think, oh, I need to do some more research. And they'll go back and do some more research. And then they'll make another hypothesis. And then they'll do an experiment. Um, but then they might have to go back and change their hypothesis and re-experiment. So there's not perfect steps here. But there are parts that all scientists pretty much use. Okay? First of all, You've got identifying the problem, okay? This here is writing, oops, is writing the question. Okay. 
wish I could write better. <laughs> is really making the question. All right. Then what they'll do is they'll research and find information. They'll see what other people know. That's the idea. You don't want to reinvent the wheel. Then they go ahead and they make a hypothesis. Now, you might be tempted to think of a hypothesis as a um, t uh, sorry, as a um, educated guess. Don't use that anymore. That is old school. That is middle school. That is elementary school. We have a more nuanced version of that. A hypothesis, and this is why I'm writing it. A hypothesis is a testable prediction. A testable prediction. It has to be testable. You can't test certain things. It's got to be something that you can actually test. Okay? And it's got to be a prediction. You have to be able to see if it's right or if it's wrong at the end. Okay? Also, down here you've got, uh, okay, so we figured out what the problem was. We did some research. We made a guess, I guess. And I don't want to use guess. We made a testable prediction about what the answer is to that question. So then we talk about the experiment. Now, the experiment is the fun part, as most people think about, okay? Now, the independent variable is the thing that you change. It's independent of anything else. It's what you change, okay? That would be like your parents. Your parents are independent, okay? Now, let me explain that in the next part. See, a dependent variable is what changes because of the independent variable changing. You are dependent. Okay? You are dependent on your parents. Okay, That's why it's dependent. It changes because of something else. Whereas things that are independent don't change because of other things. Okay, You are dependent on your parents providing you resources. Okay? Also, during an experiment, you want to make sure that you have lots of constants. Those are factors that stay the same no matter what. Okay. Um, we're talking temperature of everything. We're talking about the amount of water you give a plant that you're experimenting with. We're talking about um, uh, the, let's say you're testing a car. You want to have the same driver. You want to have the same tires. You want to have, everything should be the same. Except the only thing that should be different is this independent variable and also this dependent variable. So you could say that you want two things to change, but everything else should be constant. Lastly, you need a control, okay? A control is what would normally happen. So if you're testing about how plants grow, you need the normal way of growing them and you need to grow that and grow it your different ways so that you have something to compare to. If you can't compare it to anything, there's no reason to do the experiment because you don't have a baseline. You don't have anything to compare to and say, oh, it was better or it was worse, okay? And lastly, you draw a conclusion, okay? Uh, the conclusion, well, I mean, it could be something that's really, really, um, uh, what's the word, very definitive, or it could be something that's not definitive. Even getting an answer, um, there is a direct relationship between this and this. That's great. But if you get an answer that says, well, we did not find a relationship between this and this, that's still good information. That is still good information that is still good information, okay? So, that's it for this first part of what is involved in physics.